four kinds of pious people engage in my devotion the distressed the seekers of knowledge the seekers of worldly possessions and those who are situated in knowledge so shri krishna is saying that arjun these kinds of people come to worship god the first those who are distressed they are experiencing pain and misery and they believe that god will be able to free them from that misery and hence they approach god the urge to become free from pain and distress is a very powerful motivator you tell somebody swami ji is going to lecture on the science of god i don't have time but if the same person's son is not well and the doctors are not able to cure you tell the same person you know there is one baba halfway between dallas and houston you go to him i tell you he'll give you a vibhuti and you'll be cured immediately your son now he's flying off to meet that baba because he believes he has the solution to his problems but this is one kind of people who come to shri krishna and shri krishna accepts them in fact a whole lot of people come for this reason itself why do people go to temple to alleviate their miseries once in the year 2003 i was giving a 20 day lecture series in kuala lumpur in malaysia so it's got a huge lakshmi narayan temple and at night only i and pandit ji used to stay in the temple in the morning at 5 o'clock he would go and start worshiping all the bhagavans and i would go along with him and then he would come to the navagraha and then to shani dev he would just go on and on and on doing puja i asked him why do you worship shani dev so much he said swami ji you know the shani dev he uses hammer and hits people and then they all coming running to us and we pandits are able to fill our stomach because of shani dev <laughs> so he is his expression just indicated that the vast majority they come to god for alleviation of suffering that is okay but that is not the best kind of devotion it's like when a child is small the child says papa you do this for me mommy you do this for me i need this you must give this but then one day the child grows up and he says papa you please sit down tell me what i can do for you i'll take care of you that's a higher kind of attitude to have towards the father so the devotee is saying oh god do this for me but when the devotee grows up then says oh god what can i do for you so the first category of people art second category of people jigyasu those who are curious why do these people go and do radhe radhe what's happened to them let me also go and find out You know this colleague of mine in the office he's been going for the LTP program since last 5 days and he seems to be so peaceful i wonder what happens i need to go and check it out so the curious come there and this curiosity can be about the bigger questions in life as well why did i come to this world having come here what's my goal who am i after all now so many of our natural urges are coming from god we have understood in the science of happiness 
why we all want happiness. Why do we want happiness? Because God is the ocean of happiness and we are his little parts. So the gravitational pull towards him is in the form of the urge for happiness. Plus, all of us want to live. Nobody wishes to die. The urge for life is also natural to the soul. If someone is very disturbed and expresses, I wish I died. Sometimes people express their frustration in this way. It would be better if I died. Now let's say your friend says that, you put your hands on his throat. He says, what are you doing? No, you, you wanted to die, I'm going to help you. <laughs> hey, absolutely not. I was just saying it because I was fed up. No matter how fed up we may be, we still seek to live. One old man is in the hospital. He has got one tube going into the mouth because the teeth don't work, one bedpan there and the leg is hanging from the roof. Even that convalescing person says, Doctor, I hope I will not die. Well, your whole machinery is bad now. If you were to die, it's, you would come back in the world with a new machine, God would send you again. But the instinct to live is natural, just like the instinct for happiness. And that is coming from God again. He is eternal. He has ever existed and will continue to exist till the rest of eternity. And as his little parts, we also wish to be eternal. Seeing ourselves as the body, we experience death, which goes against our soul nature. So the urge to live. And the third is the urge for knowledge. It is also in everyone. We are always seeking more knowledge. How does this person sit? I will sit like this. How does this person talk? I will also talk like this. We're always quietly gathering knowledge. Because our source is all-knowing, sarvagya, omniscient. And again, as a little fragment of the omniscient Lord, we wish to be all-knowing. So when we experience ignorance inside, it again disturbs us. I don't want ignorance, I want knowledge. Fourth, so I've given you three reasons why be curious for God. The fourth, we all wish to be independent. We don't want anybody to be governing us, to be supervising us. Because God is supremely independent, a bhigya swarat. Uh, it's a different matter to earn your bread. You have to be dependent, you have to be subservient. But the soul wants to be free. Now the third kind. This is artharthi. Those who look for material boons. You know, I've heard that if you go and pray in that temple, you will get a job. So go and pray in that temple and get a job. So, people are going to God for material boons. So, Sri Krishna is accepting that these are also my devotees. It's possible they are not asking for the highest thing. It's like one beggar used to sit, homeless and hungry, homeless and hungry. 
and somebody gave a lottery ticket. So the lottery was for winning a Cadillac. The first prize would be a Cadillac. Now somebody came and asked the beggar, that just in case you win the lottery, what will you do? You will get a Cadillac. The beggar said, then I'll go around begging in the Cadillac. <laughs> so his intellect is stuck in begging, right? So likewise, some people are going to God for material boons. Which Sri Krishna says, I accept, they are also my devotees. And the fourth, Jnani Cha Bharatar Shabha, the Jnanis, those who have understood, oh, he's so glorious, he's so great, and I'm his little fragment. Now, in knowledge, they are coming to him not necessarily to extract some kind of boon, but just because it's a fact, he's ours and we are his. So Sri Krishna says, this is the fourth kind. So all of this is pushing us that look, seek God. <laughs>